Today's MVS shines on the brand new 2013 Mercedes-Benz GL450 4MATIC. Mercedes-Benz introduced the GL series for the 2007 model year as a full-size 7-passenger luxury crossover SUV. For 2013, the GL series is brand new and is bigger, more luxurious, and is filled with new technical innovations. It is also Motor Trend's SUV of the year for 2013. The GL450 is placed between the GL350 Bluetech and the GL550 models. Today's GL450 features the optional Bi-Xenon headlamps with active curve illumination, adaptive hive beam assist, and integrated headlamp washing system. The edge of the hood continues to show the Mercedes-Benz badge, while the front grille is also completed in Mercedes-Benz tradition, featuring a mesh grille behind two silver bars with chrome accenting. The front bumper includes two LED daytime running lamps, lower chrome accent, and several air dams. The hood also features two air extractors toward the windshield with chrome accents. The new GL is 201.6 inches long and stands at 75.2 inches tall. Today's GL450 is featured in the black exterior color. Compared to the previous generation, the new GL offers more of a sleek design. The side mirrors are completed in color matching caps with lower black accents and offer LED turn signal markers around the sides. The mirrors themselves are fully powered, power folding, and offer the optional blind spot assist indicators. More chrome accenting can be found around the tinted windows as well as on the door handles. The sides of the GL also include running boards that can be optionally illuminated. Today's GL450 features these optional 20-inch twin-spoke aluminum rims with four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes behind them. Traction, stability, adaptive braking, and brake assist systems are also included. The rear tail lamps are finished in LED fashion and are connected through a chrome belt in the center of the liftgate. The rear bumper includes two red light reflectors, plenty of chrome accents, the available towing hitch hookups, and a dual exhaust system.
The new interior of the GL series is much more refined and offers more detail to the eye compared to the previous generation. Dual front, front and second row side, a driver's knee, and curtain airbags for all three rows come equipped as standard. Today's GL450 features these black leather seats with perforated inserts and white contrasted stitching. Both front seats are powered as well as heated, and both front seats also include three-person memory presets. The interior door trim consists of burl walnut trim, a brushed aluminum door handle, your door lock and power seat controls, your window and mirror controls on a leather stitched armrest, a large door pocket, and the controls for the rear vented windows as well as your rear liftgate release. The leather stitch dashboard features more burl walnut trim as well as plenty of metallic accenting. Today's GL450 came equipped with the Keyless Go remote system with push button ignition. The driver is placed in front of this two piece illuminated gauge cluster that includes a 160 mile per hour speedometer, an 8,000 RPM tack, and gauges for your fuel level and coolant temperature. The top display includes the outside temperature, a clock, and your collision prevention assist indicator. The display below will display a variety of vehicle information, including a speedometer, vehicle mileage and trip computers, additional fuel information, navigation and media info, allows you to customize your vehicle settings, and much more. You'll also find your attention assist indicator, your lane assist indicator, and current gear selection. The driver holds on to a leather wrapped steering wheel with burl walnut trim located at the top and the bottom of the rim. The left spoke includes the controls for your driver information display. The right spoke includes your media controls. And behind both spokes sits the manumatic shifting paddles.
To the left of the steering wheel sits the automatic exterior lighting controls. and your parking brake control. Your front and rear wiper controls are placed on the turn signal stock. Underneath sits the power steering column control. The opposite stock is your gear selection lever. The center stack starts off with a 7 inch LCD display that is used for all of your media functions. Today's GL450 came equipped with an AM, FM, CD, DVD and MP3 player backed by the optional 13 speaker. 830 watt Harman Kardon Logic 7 sound system. It also includes voice activated commands, Bluetooth connectivity, and today's model is also Sirius XM satellite radio equipped. The display screen can also be used to display the navigation maps. and other vehicle applications, such as the vehicle's owner's manual. or Sirius XM weather, among many other things. Below the screen sits the nicely placed audio and telephone controls as well as the CD player slot and a place for an SD card. The multifunction switchboard includes your front heated seat controls. Your traction control override. and your emergency hazards. The bottom of the center stack includes your dual zone automatic climate controls. The center console begins with a small storage compartment
and two hidden cup holders, as well as an ashtray and cigarette lighter. The command controller is what is used to scroll through all of the media center controls and functions. To the right sits your Airmatic Air Suspension Control and the Downhill Speed Control. Behind those sits a small storage pocket. The center armrest opens up to a small storage console with removable top tray and also includes a USB port and integrated media connector inside. The glove compartment is decently sized. The ceiling includes two sun visors with overhead lighted mirrors. And a secondary sun visor. You'll also find map lamps on the rear view mirror. Your interior lighting controls. A place for a pair of glasses. your emergency and service call controls, your universal garage door controls, and the control for the optional panorama sunroof. The second row offers 38.5 inches of leg room, 58.3 inches of shoulder room, and 40 inches of headroom. Rear door pockets are also provided. The rear of the center console includes two air vents, multiple storage pockets, a hidden ashtray, and a 12 volt power outlet near the floor. Netted pockets are also provided. The middle seat back folds out into an armrest with two cup holders. The second row can be folded by pressing on the button at the top of the seat back.
The third row offers 35 inches of leg room, 50.5 inches of shoulder room, and 38.9 inches of headroom. The third row is also power folding, with controls located right here and in the back of the cargo area. The back of the GL can carry up to 16 cubic feet of cargo behind the third row, 49.4 cubic feet with the third row folded, and a total 93.8 cubic feet with both rolls folded flat. Under the floor sits several storage compartments as well as the spare tire. Off to the right of the cargo area sits the first aid kit. The GL450 is powered by a 4.6 liter, 32 valve, twin turbo direct injection V8 that produces 362 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It makes an EPA estimated 14 miles per gallon in the city and 19 miles per gallon on the highway. The GL450 also comes equipped with a 26.4 gallon fuel tank. I know it's a bit windy all of a sudden, like really windy, but uh, this engine's already pre pretty quiet, so it's gonna be kinda hard to hear the engine note with the wind, maybe. The V8 is connected to a 7-speed automatic transmission with a manumatic shifting feature. The 4-matic all-wheel drive system is also included.
Once in reverse, the rear backup camera is displayed with projection guidance lines. Yeah, the weather was worse than I thought it was going to be today, as you can tell. So. One thing I can already tell you about this Mercedes, um, along with many of the other Mercedes Benz that I've driven, is the steering. Always effortless. Very smooth, very responsive. I could do it with one finger. It's very easy to turn the wheel. Look at that. Very, very awesome steering system. The car itself is actually really comfortable. Very quiet, as you can tell. This poor Benz doesn't have a bumper. We'll go this way. Very nice car. She's got a lot of uh, a lot of pep. Doesn't take much to get it going. And that's that. In addition to the footage that I filmed yesterday on this 2013 Mercedes-Benz GL450, uh, we're going to go ahead and take it on a full test drive. And here with me I have Martin Schaefer of Fred Martin Ford Mercedes-Benz. And he's going to go ahead and give us some additional information on the Benz. I like how I'm starting to find a lot more like these, the guidance lines too. Correct, yeah, it'll like, tell you the direction, the trajectory of the vehicle. You just want to do the usual route? Yeah. <laughs> the one that I know so well. Yeah, me too. That's why I do it. <laughs> Maybe you have another one. This was the command controller. Mm -hmm. It wasn't available. Did you see the weather? Yeah. Which is kind of neat. And you could actually see a five day forecast. You could go out to a map, see the Doppler radar. They're getting hammered. Right? Yeah, go up here and you could actually find out how hammered they're getting. Look at this. I could zoom in. Just uh, 13, you know, 2 degrees. Yeah. And then everything's voice activated. I didn't know if you knew that. With this button right here, you just press it in. Navigation. This also has those outside triangles that we're lighting up. The um, blind spot. Blind spot okay. assist. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Somebody gets, you'll see as they uh, as we're driving, and someone gets in the blind spot over here. It, uh, it 
will actually uh, turn red. And if you try to put the turn signal on it, give it a warning. Okay. Someone's in your blind spot, so they try to put the right set turn signal on. There you go. Okay. That's another warning. That, like, that's, that's the first time I've actually driven a yeah, car and actually. Saw it. Yeah. It's handling really well. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's so quiet. Another thing I would like to notice in the those brakes anticipating you're going to use them. Oh, okay. And when you do apply the force of the brake, it's going to deliver exactly what's needed line, time and distance, how, how quickly you're going to stop the vehicle. That's neat. Yeah. Hopefully you never have to use that. But yeah, and please, <laughs> let's not demonstrate it. <laughs> uh, and I think we talked about this before, the uh, coffee cup over there. Yeah, that's um, something uh, about like driver fatigue or something. So you're on the car after about 10 minutes out on the freeway, I think between 50 and 110, something like that. If you start to drive a little bit differently, it detects it and it lights up and asks you and it shuts down your radio mm -hmm. and it takes over speakers and asks you politely as a time for a rest. Huh. It makes you press the OK button on the left hand side of your steering wheel and it resets. And the other thing, did you see where it looks like an automobile with the two lanes going there? I'm going to say that's the um, lane assist, or? That's it. Lane keeper, and what, what's going on, there's just a camera that's wild that you'd have to see from the outside of the car, obviously. But it's actually looking at those markings on the road. And um, after, that's not going to track it in the city, obviously, when you're stop and go, it drive you crazy. Yeah. Once you guys believe it's over 20 miles an hour, uh, if you start to drift, um, it'll indicate over here all in green that the, the system's active. Mm -hmm. If you start to drift, it'll actually give you a vibration in the steering wheel. Oh, is that what it is? Which is kind of cool. You know, so it's training wheels for your car. Huh. Training wheels for your car. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful to have to drive like a car like this on these roads. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to watch out for all these holes and stuff. It's a good, good, uh, good point, but uh, don't forget how capable an off-road vehicle this is. That's true too, yeah. It's designed for a lot worse than this. I noticed yesterday how it has the uh, leveling suspension system too. Mm -hmm. So if you press this it, button... It'll actually do it while you're driving? Mm -hmm. It's uh, the air suspension. What's going to happen is once we get on the freeway up here at about 55 miles an hour, it's going to be signal actually load down, lower itself down for aerodynamic stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, but that gives you a better feel for a suspension here. The other thing on this one here, I don't know if you notice that, that that'll give you a, uh, if you run steep hills, uh, it'll actually help the hill assist. It'll keep you from actually speeding them down the hill? Or? Sort of, yeah. What it'll use is the combination, you know, the computer, obviously. We'll use a combination of braking with the brake and the brakes to kind of keep you at a steady pace going down the steep grade. Not a great call for that around here. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot worse uh, yesterday than I thought it would be. <laughs> so it took me forever to get this. The actual footage of this car. Uh -huh. I forgot my gloves. Like I was like filming outside for two minutes, and I came back here, got warm a little bit, and I went back outside. Don't be afraid to accelerate right here. Right here? Yeah. So, I always tell people the entrance ramps are probably the safest place to accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> you usually don't get a speeding ticket on the entrance ramp unless you're in a very safe vehicle. Oh, yeah. If you accelerate right now, going around this bend, you can see the feeling of it, you know, with all these, you know, She's got some power. Do you see how it's lowering? Yeah. It's 
so smooth, like it's really nice. supposed to give you like more support on like cars that have more of like a softer kind of seat. The, the Mercedes consults with the team of with the, with the PD specialist and they design their seats so that you won't be getting as much fatigue as you would if it was a real cushion, cushion chair. Mm -hmm. I, I just, it's, it's hard to picture like somebody taking a Mercedes off-road. It's just, yeah, I, I Luckily, I don't uh, know anybody doing it purposely. <laughs> yeah. On the occasion, somebody comes in, but and that's to be said of all the highlight. That should be is very capable of somebody putting it to the test. I, I think what you find is that only guys that are still offering seriously are the uh, guys with the pickup trucks and uh, the Jeep crew. Like, I like the voice the best though. Radio. Yeah. And then FM. And then frequency eighty eight point five. It's so precise. Yeah. Like it's amazing how it actually picked that up. Correct. And the, the other really neat thing about it is you can go through your system uh, setup here. Of course you'd want to do this. <laughs> and uh, what it has is a voice control feature in here, and it's called Start New Individualization. Mm -hmm. And by pressing this button, individualization is only possible when the cancel. Kind of knew that. <laughs> Anyhow, it, it prompts you to read back uh, sentences, phrases, and numbers, so the software adapts to your your voice. So. for park. That's all it takes. And then unfortunately the test drive comes to the end it would be fun this it would be nice to I to go for a, a ride on this for an extended period of time. Oh definitely I guess you have to buy it to do that. <laughs> and that concludes today's MVS on the twenty thirteen Mercedes Benz GL four fifty four Matic. I'm Michael Adams and I'll see you guys next time.